Welcome back. You think you've seen everything, and in this case, you've not seen everything because it's what wasn't seen in a championship game that caused all the <laughs> the comment. And I was there, and I'm as guilty as guilty as Charles. I never spotted. Not make a referee, the, Alan. No, <laughs> no the, maybe I would at the KCOM Stadium. Hull City won, Sunderland won. Otherwise, unremarkable drawn game. Yeah. Um, the guy in the uh, in the centre there, Darren England, very good referee, and none of the as assistants have spotted that there ain't a penalty spot in either area or a penalty mark. To yeah. be correct. Yeah. That's... How's that happened? I don't know because one of your duties. I mean, you get the professional level. We're talking here. You get to the ground. You know, three hours before. One of the things you do is you walk the field of play and you walk in the field of play purely to check the markings, check the goals, check everything's in order. I'm not quite sure how it's been missed. Um, but as we'll talk about on Ref Show Extra later, you can play a game without penalty marks. It's just a case of if he'd have awarded one, um, he would have had to mark the penalty mark out himself. Well, it, that's interesting. I just wish there had been a penalty award. <laughs> even, even more well, I dramatic. Remember, Alan, I it? remember years and years ago, very clearly, watching on Match of the Day, the baseball ground was the one of, was the worst pitch in the league they'd yeah. been playing, and the, the penalty mark had, had disappeared. disappeared yes, and, yes. And, they, and they came out, the grounds was called, they came out with a pot of paint, they, they walked, walked it out. I'm just wondering now if every referee should have a a six-yard piece of tape <laughs> so that we can go from the 18-yard <laughs> to the, to the, so to to the, the penalty, penalty mark spot. and that would make it, you know, it must happen a lot in, in non-league football. If I was a, not, right. you know, a, a junior ref or something, yeah. I think I'd do that. Yeah. Although I, I suppose everybody just accepts you're, you're an expert at marking out 12 yards now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, the curiosity <laughs> here, I mean, let's say the, the club are not exactly... Um, Blame us for this <coughs> no, because no, I mean apparently Hull sacked their ground staff quite recently. So well, that might have uh, something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that they, they were negligence, yeah, you know, no, not having a, a penalty mark on. Yeah. But it's they're also at that ground. It's dual purpose, so rugby league is played yeah, there. Yeah. So there was the distraction of clearly rugby lines was markings mm. were still on that field. So yeah. you know, whether that had anything to do with the referee not spotting it, I don't no, know. No, I mean, I, to be, as you say, ultimately the club are responsible for this. They mark the ground out. They're yeah. the ones who will be reported. They're the ones who will probably get a fine. Um, but Do you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. The, the referee will just, I mean, be no, reprimanded well, well, or what? You know, Darren England is, a, is an up-and-coming referee. He's got a lot of potential. Mm. Um, but it's just that attention to detail and something like that, as basic as that, should have been picked up prior mm. to the game. I'm sure there'll be some sympathy for him among colleagues and a lot of joking, Mickey taking as well. It's a bit like somebody you know who's got a beard and then when you next see them, they've shaved it off, but you, you're you aware something's slightly amiss, but you're not quite certain what it is. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, it can be as obvious as that. So doubtless this is something we'll not be talking about again, but... Uh, you never know in this game. Let's go to the Premier League and the biggest game of the weekend, the goalless draw between Chelsea and Arsenal. It was a good game otherwise, yeah. not without talking points. David Luiz of Chelsea, <coughs> straight red card. Is there any argument whatsoever on that? For me, there's absolutely no argument. It's excessive force. It's endangering the opposition. Um, you know, years ago when we were playing, well, that would have been a foul, maybe not even a yellow card because that was the culture then. But, yeah. but everything's changed yeah. and, and it has to for the... For the safety of the players, people are saying, "Well, if, if he gets the ball, it's only a yellow." It has to be a red, whether he gets the ball or not, because if you, if you had that type of um, interpretation, you, out of ten tackles, six might get the ball, but four might break a leg, Can and you go. can't have that, you know. Yeah. And everybody needs to know. Even in junior football, it used to happen a lot in youth football, right, where the referee would give him a booking. And, and the commentator, we sometimes have commentators saying, well, that's because it would normally be a red, but he's getting a yellow because he's only young and he's got to learn. Yeah. Well, you have to learn by being sent off. Even if they're 10, yeah. take them off and make them learn, yeah. you know, that no, this is the rules because otherwise it can be very, very dangerous. And that's the problem. We've got mm. people who are still living in the old world sort of trying to, yeah. you know, recapture that. And, and, um, and it has an influence on young people understanding the rules of the game. Strong words from Paul and also from Keith Hackett in his Daily Telegraph column referencing that Chelsea have now had, I think, five players sent off in eight games. So that's a problem they've got, they've got to address as well. No, Paul's absolutely yeah. right. It, absolutely no doubt it is a shocking challenge. It ticks all the boxes for a red card. 
Um, absolutely no doubt. And those are the types of challenges that we want to see eradicate from the game. Mm. Guy Beale blogged the game on yourotherf.com. Simply excellent was his summary mm. on uh, Michael Oliver. Mm. There was another talking point in that. Uh, David Louise was uh, involved in that earlier than his sending off, obviously. He just Well, he got a, a caution for... A, and over what was effectively an overhead kick. Now, some yeah. people were saying that should have been a red card. No. I mean, there's a lot of confusion at the moment because if we go back to last week and the Mane challenge um, and then the one that happened on the Sunday in the Tottenham game, mm. uh, people are now analysing every high-footed challenge and saying it should be a red card. Well, no. This was an attempted overhead kick. Um, the player was from, basic, from what is from an effect a standing start. Uh, his back is to goal. At the time he, he goes up from the ground, there are not a lot of defenders there. Obviously, as the ball's in the air, the defenders come in, he does his overhead kick and he makes contact with the defender's head, who in effect was coming running in to head the ball. Um, I can see why Michael's issued a caution, um, because it was the 70th minute of the game, the tempo was going up. It was the first controversial challenge of the game, if you like. But for me, as a standalone challenge, it was simply dangerous play and, a, and a, yeah. an indirect free kick. And we don't want to abolish the overhead no. kick, do we? No, I mean, there's a lot of debate on the radio. I'm listening to yeah. um, Talk Sport and uh, Joey Barton and everybody's talking about it and they're saying, should we, should we, are we going to end up banning yeah. overhead kicks? No, it, to me, it's very clear that if you're t having an overhead kick in the box, say, like Wayne Rooney's against Man City or Chans or Dennis Stewart years ago. Oh, and, and Mark and, Hughes. You know, Mark Hughes. Yeah. Well, there's a whole difference because Correct. they're being marked, the ball comes a little bit behind them so they can't head it, and now they, yeah. they can execute it because they know it's not a crowded area. Yeah. They know pretty much they're aware of what's yeah. around them. Or the other instance might be in a crowded box where the ball just pops up quickly and it's a quick reaction. Yeah. And let's keep but, that in but, the game. But this, yeah. this, this was careless yeah. and really hopeful. Yeah. Um, the ball goes right up in the air. It's crowded. So yeah. there's a lot of time for people to come and head it. Yeah. Yeah. And to an attempt at an overhead kick there is very... Right. It's just stupid, right. really. Okay. You know, so we have to stop that and make make sure everybody knows about that. Let's let's keep. We'll have to. We yeah. We'll have to kick on to the championship. Harry Redknapp sacked. Six straight defeats. Can't blame the referee for this one. Birmingham one, Preston three, um, and the referee was Keith Stroud. But in in League Two um, now, Gary Caldwell sacked by Chesterfield. Three wins in twenty nine. Crikey. You know, that's an indefensible record. However, I'm reliably informed that in the home defeat against Accrington, Craig Hicks, the referee, made some pretty bad decisions against Chesterfield in that. Uh, he correctly sent off a Chesterfield player, but Accrington should have had a man sent off as well, I'm told, by good you know, observers, and there was a strong claim for a penalty not given. So referees can affect a decision from uh, from a club. Three wins uh, in 29 games correct. speaks for itself. I think, right. you know, every referee goes out there wanting to get every decision right. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but it doesn't happen across the board. So Caldwell won't have been treated any Different more favourably. He was managers. unlucky on the day, yeah. let's say. Steve Martin uh, in charge of Burton 2, Fulham 1. You've both had a look at the mm. penalty for the, uh, for the second Burton goal. Still don't know what he's give it for. Um, I mean, it is... We use the word soft, um, incorrect is, is my view on right. it. And I think that's mysterious, really. It's yeah. hard to right. see who, Steve, made the film, who made the, who yeah. made the yeah. foul. Steve, yeah. Steve's a really Phantom. experienced referee, so I'm, I'm surprised he's given that. Phantom foul. Two minutes left. Time wasting is the is the issue. Chris Wilder gets <laughs> caught, up, caught up in this. Norwich pays Sheffield United the compliment of coming to Bramall Lane, where the Blades have got a 100% record, and time wasting, etc., etc., defending a 1 0 lead for the win. Chris Wilder gets sent off trying to get the ball back into play from the Norwich technical area. Do referees do enough? Because he pointed the finger and said, you know, it's up to referees to cut this out. I think it's, a, I think it's really hard for the referees. There's a lot going on. You've got enough on your plate and you've got to worry about time. And I'd like to see time taken away from, from the referee and, and be independent. But whilst it's not, then the referees have to be proactive in communicating to everybody that they've clocked it. So, you know, it's no mysterious thing that when a team goes 1-0 up, the other team are pressing 15 minutes to go, the goalkeeper suddenly decides he's not going to take goal kicks at this side of the goal area, he's going to take them at the other side of the goal area. Players will start swapping who's taking throw-ins. The referee has to be aware of it, they have to be mm. proactive, and they've got to visibly communicate to everybody, I've, 
I've got this. Yeah. Chris, I've got and, it. It'll be added on. And that and, stops and that frustration It stops that frustration. But, but managers have to be responsible for their own yeah, actions. Yeah, they can't go into the other technical area. And you cannot go into the other technical area, no matter how frustrated you are. There is the fourth official there. He could have gone to the fourth official and said, look, there's a lot of time wasting going on. Can you mention it to the referee? They've got the comms kit. There was a different way of going about this. Mm. So the, re the manager has to take responsibility for his own actions. And finally, there's an even easier solution to this, ultimately, isn't there? Yeah, I, I think clarity, you know, have a separate timekeeper, put it all on the top. Everybody knows it's been out. You can see the, stop, the clock stopped, yeah. maybe, you know, in those last situations. Yeah. Um, I know from being in European tournaments and indoor tournaments, you, you can see the clock counting down and it's very clear what's happening. And I think that adds to the excitement. Everybody can see, they can see the countdown. And um, if, if it keeps stopping each time there's an injury or, or, or a, you know, a stoppage, um, substitution, yeah. then, then you can see what's Okay, happening. that's our full-time whistle for another week. I haven't had to keep the time. I've had a signal from, from over there. Thank you very much, gents. It's been thoroughly entertaining and very informative and good educational stuff for referees as well. Do rejoin us for another Ref Show next week. Hope to see you then. <laughs>